First thing is infrastructure. We've got to build roads. We've got to slow the growth. We have to, we have to catch up. We're over our skis with, with building, and we need to catch up first. So that's going to be our major focus. Liz Ryan caught up with Clay Murphy last night at his victory party at the Classic Car Museum. The District 3 commissioner candidate was victorious over writing candidate Fitch McGraw. Ann Taylor also won her race. And with sitting commissioner Sarah Arnold, women will outnumber men on the board of county commissioners. My grandmother, my mother, uh, my wife and my daughter are all very, very strong women. And so I'm really looking forward to the challenge of of working with a new board. And I think it's going to be a great time. I think we're really going to get some things done for the county. Although Democrat Adam Morley had a very good showing in this red county, Sam Greco is the new state representative in District 19. I'm grateful for the strong support of Flagler and St. John's County, and I'm excited to get to Tallahassee, get to work on behalf of uh, the people of District 19 and everybody here in Florida. But let's go back to the top. Donald Trump got our county's vote for president by a wide margin. Rick Scott won his re-election bid for United States Senator. John Rutherford will serve another term in Congress representing District 5. Michael Waltz will do the same in District 6. Tom Leake is now the state senator for District 7. He got more than twice as many votes as Democrat George Hill. Republican Kim Kendall was victorious in her bid for state representative in District 18. And Judson Sapp took District 20. Robert Hardwick was re-elected as sheriff, and Christian Whitehurst was also re-elected as county commissioner District 1. In the city of St. Augustine, Commission 1 seat went to Jonathan DePreter. As for the ballot measures, legalizing marijuana failed, as did Amendment 4 seeking to remove abortion regulations. Regarding schools, the continuation of the half-cent sales tax to fund schools passed, as did the one millage increase to property tax to pay for increased teachers' pay. For St. Augustine's Local Morning News, I'm Liz Ryan. This local news is a service of your hometown Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota US1 St. Augustine, here to wow you. We're not going to get anything from this. It is not mutually responsible. It is not okay with the citizens, and we're here to tell you that. One of the many public comments at the recent St. John's County Commission meeting objecting to a planned community development. A proposed rezoning for what developers are calling an Argahood is before St. John's County commissioners, and it's facing serious headwinds. 214 will be a nightmare. I think we have a major issue, not only with this development, every development y'all are bringing to this community. Freehold is not a responsible developer or a good neighbor. Based on their record, please do not let Freehold develop any more properties in St. John's County. County staff analysis concludes that if this development is approved, it will dramatically change the character of the area. Have any of you tried using Allen Neese Road to get to 207 during peak hours on a weekday? What about using Holmes Boulevard to get to 214 during peak hours? It is a test of anyone's patience on the best please. of Please say no. You know this isn't any good. All of you know this is not a good project. Call the Robinson Improvement Company Planned Unit Development. The plan calls for over 3,000 homes on over 2,000 acres off County Road 214, west of I-95. Commissioner Henry Dean explains his no vote. He says the board has to start demanding the infrastructure is in place before approving development projects. I'm very disappointed that I cannot support this project. We're in a situation where I think we as a commission have to start demanding, put the money up front and get it done. The overall project is a unique situation because in 2019, commissioners agreed to a comprehensive plan amendment that made the land use residential B, with the agreement that no more than just over 3,000 homes would be built and no building would take place before 2026. For St. Augustine's Local Morning News, I'm Karen Johnson. And now you're up to date with St. Augustine's Local Morning News. I'm Rich Carroll.